The American Angus Association has been collecting foot scores for Angus cattle since 2015. This data collection allowed for the release of two foot score research EPDs, reaffirming Angus breeders' commitment toward genetic progress. We came about launching this foot score research EPD. It was really a recommendation from the membership. Um, we heard feedback from the members that said that they were having issues and they were seeing issues in their females, um, in their other progeny that are out basically in production. It was an issue that was identified by our members, brought back to us at the association, and we created an initiative around that to basically try to put out a genetic selection tool for them. So it was really member driven. It was from them, worked their, worked their way all the way up through the board of directors, and then was an initiative that was placed on our plate at AGI. American Angus Association is the first breed association in the United States to start to collect this data and hopefully have a genetic prediction in the future. And so the need for the information and the phenotypes uh, of what the foot scores hopefully will accomplish will give somebody a selection tool to use and increase the longevity of, of Angus cattle. So in general, it's really important for us to start to record this foot structure data, not only to create a genetic analysis, but really to make sure that we have cattle out there, not only in the Angus breed, but really in the beef industry as a whole, who are structurally sound, who can stay and remain in the herd for a long period of time and, and remain productive. Obviously, that's a huge trait that each one of our members analyze and take into account. Something like structure, are these cattle structurally sound? Because it's a limiting factor for as long as they can stay in the herd. If you have something that's lame or you have something that's out there and it can't move about to graze or can't move about to go get water, um, obviously that's going to be a detriment to your overall production efficiency. What we have out for producers to use, we have foot, a foot scoring guidelines. So basically, we have two traits that we collect for. The one's going to be foot angle and the other's going to be claw set. We score these cattle for both of those traits on a one through nine scale. Basically, when we analyze claw set, what we're looking at is how symmetrical are those toes, right? Do we have toes that curl in towards each other or basically are divergent? If they're divergent or basically we have a lot of spread in the middle of those toes, we're going to score those cattle more towards the one scoring system for claw set. If we have toes that are completely curling over one another, basically they're going to end up on the other side of the spectrum and be more towards the score of a nine. When we look at something like foot angle, basically what we're looking at is we're looking at depth of heel, length of toe, things like that, and really what is their angle of their pasture into the ground. So again, five is going to be is going to be ideal when we think about a 45 degree angle, toes that are um, short and symmetrical and in some heel depth there. If we think about cows that are very soft on their patterns or have a lot of angle to the ground, they're gonna be more on the side of the nine. If we have animals that are basically very straight up through their pasture and in their knee, they're gonna be on the scoring side of the system of a one. There are some recommendations uh, in capturing this information. I think it's important to be mindful of. Uh, obviously, it needs to be taken on a hard surface, uh, maybe a scraped alleyway or a concrete alleyway. Realize not everyone has concrete to work off of, but something that they can see the claw set easily, they can evaluate the depth of heel easily, and then the toe length to capture those scores. Um, you know, a lot of questions have been, can we do it in a shoot? And, and I say yes and no. I think you can evaluate claw set pretty accurately uh, with the animal standing in a chute. Um, I do think to see the heel depth, you want to see those uh, bulls and females standing naturally and moving naturally. And so to have them outside the chute in the alleyway would be a lot simpler. Uh, we're going to score the worst uh, foot, the poorest foot uh, for each trait. One of the recommendations uh, for time frame in terms of turning in that information. Um, for the yearling data, both bulls and heifers have to be at least 320 days of age. Um, AGI will accept that information. After that, it's going to be tied back to their contemporary group. Uh, and so we realize that the bulls, there's a probably a fairly short window. Once they hit a year of age, they're not going to be on the ranch anymore. And so we're mindful of that, but on the females, I think it's a good opportunity to maybe capture that data two to three different times over the period of their life. So possibly as a yearling heifer, and then again sometime as a young female once she's in production. 
So when we talk about the differences between the environment and basically the genetic interactions for foot score, we really rely on our heritability estimates. When we look at the heritability of both foot angle and claw set, we're at a 25% heritability. And so what that heritability means is basically about 25% of it is controlled by the genetics, where 75% of that trait is influenced by the environment. So it's basically a moderately heritable trait. Can we make genetic progress with it um, through EPD selection? Of course we can, but it's not all due to the hereditary of that particular trait, right? There's still things like how do we feed these animals? What types of climates are they in? What types of weather do we have? Were they under um, rocky ground conditions? Things like that. They're going to affect the overall foot structure, but there definitely is a genetic component to this that we can make some progress.